Hi Crafty Fam, my name is Alex Vanover and welcome back to my Sublimation for Beginners series. This is episode number five where I'm going to teach you how to create your own custom sublimation designs. Now my goal with my sublimation series is to do two different things. First, I want to explain all the things that I thought were really confusing about sublimation when I was a beginner. And I also want to give you tangible steps that you can use to start sublimating on your own. So if you want to see more content about that, then I'd love to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DIY Alex. And right beside the subscribe button, click the bell so that you get notified every time that I release a new episode of this series or another tutorial or DIY video. Okay, let's jump in to this episode. I know that for some crafters, creating your own sublimation designs is one of the most intimidating parts about getting started. So that's why I'm going to teach you how to create your own custom designs in a program called canva.com. I love using Canva for design because it's a great resource, whether you have a background in design or you know nothing about design at all. The other great thing about it is that you can create a completely free account and utilize that to the fullest extent if you prefer. But in this video, I am going to show you how to create this design using a Canva Pro subscription that I have personally. This video is not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just think it's a really great resource. But if you decide you want to learn more about Canva, I'll put a link in the description of the video for a free trial in case you decide that you want to try it out. But Canva is definitely not the only option that you have for creating your own sublimation designs. The beautiful thing about it is you can use just about any software that you can think of, including Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Silhouette Studio, StarCraft Create, PicMonkey. I mean, truly the options are just about endless when it comes to programs for creating sublimation designs. The one place I actually don't recommend creating sublimation designs though is Cricut Design Space. And here's the reason why I say that. First, I've noticed that you'll get a higher quality if you print outside the Cricut Design Space program. So I don't recommend using it for that reason, but also because if you do print through Design Space, you're gonna have to cut off those black registration marks every time that you make a print, and you may even be limited by the size of your design. So also another thing to consider is that if you create your design in Design Space and then screenshot it and print it outside of Cricut Design Space, that's actually going to lower your image quality even further. So I don't recommend that either. I can recommend trying out a free trial of a few different programs, figuring out what you like and what you want to learn more about, and then starting with that when you're creating your own sublimation designs. So now that you have an intro to creating your own sublimation designs, let's get into the design part of this episode. So to get started creating your design on Canva, you'll want to go to canva.com. That's spelled C-A-N-V-A dot com. And like I mentioned to you in the introduction, I do have the pro version of Canva, which means I do pay for a subscription to it. So to get started creating our design, we're going to go to the big purple create a design button in the upper right hand corner. So we'll click this button and then we'll have a couple of options. So there are lots of template sizes. Um, this is also a great program if you are trying to grow on social media. I make a lot of my graphics for my social media on Canva as well. But I typically like to go to the custom size button down here and type in my own size. So for the width, I like to do 11 inches and for the height, I like to do eight and a half. That's obviously the same size as a piece of paper, but I like everything to go horizontally so I can get a little bit more width out of my design. And in the drop down menu, this is pixels. I need to change this to inches to make sure it's the same size as a piece of paper. And then I'll retype this in because <laughs> it wanted to convert it from pixels. So we'll do 11 by eight and a half and then click create new design. So this is going to give us a canvas that is the same size as a piece of paper. This is a great gauge if you're going to be creating designs, especially in multiple sizes. Um, this is just going to give me as much room to work as I can possibly have. And I'm going to show you how to build a design using some really basic elements that I think is a good formula for a lot of sublimation designs. Not that you have to do this way every single time. I just think it's an easy, repeatable formula that you guys can take with you when you're creating your own designs. 
So to begin for the background, I'm gonna start with kind of a base layer, if you will. And I have some graphics already downloaded from designbundles.net. I'm gonna be using this build your own sublimation background file uh, because I think this is so beneficial. I will also link this one for you in the description in case you want to use this one, or there's tons of other options out there here on Design Bundles and on Creative Fabrica. I'm sure crafty.net probably even has some. So pick whatever you like and whatever fits your style. I just really liked this one because it has a lot of variety in all these different backgrounds. And then it also has these really cute frames. So I'm gonna show you how to um, stack these all up and make them look really good. But I have already downloaded this design to my computer and extracted the files out of the zipped folder. So I'm gonna go back into Canva and in order to upload it, I'll go over here to the left-hand side and click uploads. And then I'll click upload media to browse on my computer. Then I'm gonna go into where I have my craft files saved. And I do have a specific sublimation designs folder because I think that just makes it easier since they are different from SVGs. In fact, the best file type for these types of files typically is a PNG. So a lot of sublimation designs are gonna come as PNG files. So then I'll look through all these different backgrounds and I will choose, let's do this pink paint layer. So we'll click it to select it. As you can see, when I hover over it, it says that it's a PNG type of image. And then we'll choose open. And that will put it here basically in our downloads. And then as soon as this one loads, I'm gonna go back in and add in one more piece from that bundle. So we'll just click the purple upload media button. And then I'll scroll down until I find these different frames. I really like how this highlights the design. I just think it really adds something fun, especially when you're using kind of an abstract background. Ooh, I love those gold specs. <laughs> I didn't plan on using those in this design, but we may have to go back and use those later. Um, let's see, I really like frame number four. I think the pink and gold aesthetic is gonna go really well with my paint splatters. To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pink paint splatter to add it into my canvas. And first I'll kind of size it for the piece of paper. Now, like I said, I wanna take up as much room as possible on my paper because I just like to always take advantage of that. If you are sizing your design differently, feel free to make your canvas something other than eight and a half by 11. You certainly don't have to do that like I did. So we'll start with it that size and we may play with it and change it up, um, but I'm gonna start as big as I can and then go smaller if I need to. Then in order to really bring the emphasis to the center of the paint um, swatch, I'll go ahead and click on this gold frame too, and we'll go ahead and size this for the swatch. Now there's no hard and fast rule for what you, um, or how you size these frames. Of course, it's really whatever look you like and whatever you think looks good. I typically like to get the frame around this paint swatch so that there's not a whole lot of white inside. It just looks like we like kind of effort effortlessly painted outside the frame. <laughs> so I like that type of look, but of course you could make it smaller or bigger, whatever um, look you're going for. So now to add an extra layer of dimension, I'm gonna go at, I'm gonna go in and use some of the elements that canva.com offers us um, and create something that is gonna add a little bit more emphasis here in the center. So you guys know me, this should not be a surprise to you, but I'm gonna search in Canva for leopard spots. <laughs> let's see, let's try leopard print and see what that looks like. Ooh, and there are so many different options. So as you can see, when you are looking through um, the Canva search results, you'll see when you hover over it that it has a little crown and it says pro. So anything that does that means that you have to have the paid pro subscription in order, in order to use it for free. Um, but a lot of times the free designs are gonna be here towards the top. And when you hover over them, they will say free over here in the corner. So keep that in mind, depending on the Canva subscription that you have. And what I'm looking for here is a um, leopard print with a with a open background or a transparent background. So something like this white leopard would look really cool, but I think I'm looking for something a little bit smaller. And one thing I can do to narrow down some of my results is go over here to graphics. As you can see, you have options for photos, graphics, videos, and audio, um, but the graphics are gonna have more opportunities to um, change up the colors and do things like that. Whereas the photos pretty much are what they are. There's not a ton of adjusting that you can do. So that's why I wanna utilize the graphics. Maybe I'll go ahead and insert this and we'll just try a couple different ones on. 
ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm not really a big fan of whatever is going on right here. So um, while it's still selected, I'll just press delete on my keyboard to get rid of it. You guys wanted a real time design with me video, so here it is. <laughs> I'll show you exactly what the process looks like. I did go ahead and brainstorm this design ahead of time, but of course I might make changes as I go because I want this to be as authentic for you guys as possible. Ooh, I'm kind of liking this one. This one would be cool. It's a bit dense, but actually that might work really well. Okay, so I like where this one is going, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the one I don't want and choose delete. Then while this one's selected, I'm gonna use the little rotator button right here and rotate this sideways. And then I wanna kind of fit it into my frame. And we can do small things like crop this and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and size it so that it's just inside my frame. And then I will crop out any of the areas that don't fit. Yep, that's exactly the look I was going for. I like that a lot better. Another reason I like using Canva is because I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard. Arrow keys are so helpful when you're doing designing because they just do a little subtle shift. Um, some programs, like if you're working in Cricut Design Space, that makes a huge jump every time you touch your uh, arrow keys and it doesn't end up working out very well. So I love using my arrow keys. Okay, so now we can kind of see that this is a little bit wider than my frame. So with this selected, I'm gonna go up to Crop, and then I will just bring this graphic in just a bit. So that it's right inside that frame and I'll click done. Yes, and that's looking so good. Okay, so then I'm gonna select it and we wanna make sure that it's the leopard print we have selected. Then I'm gonna right click on it and you'll see some options that you would normally in Cricut Design Space find in the arrange function. So you can either do send backward or send to back. So if you send backward, that's gonna send it back one layer at a time. So if I do send backward, that's gonna send it between the pink paint swatch and the gold frame. If I sent it to the very back, that would put it behind the paint swatch. So I just wanna go back one layer. So I'm gonna click send backward. And that way we can still see the design through the frame, but it's not the forefront of what we see. And in fact, it's kind of um, a little uneven. It's a little bit high right here. So I'm gonna try to select the frame again. I don't know if I have the right one selected or not. Nope, not quite yet. So we'll put that one back and we'll do send to back for this one, put this one up in the forefront again, and then just use my arrow keys to space it down. I think just one, I think that's gonna be just right. So then we'll right click again on the leopard print and click send backward. Yep, that's it, just perfect. Okay, so now that I have some layers and some dimension in my image, now it's time to add text or more graphics or whatever it is you're going for, for the main section of your design. So I wanna bring text to your attention in Canva because there are so many cool things that you can do with it. Um, the elements are great too. And honestly, if you're just looking for like some fun clip art, this would be perfect. Now, the one thing I don't know, um, you'll have to do some research on this if you are a seller of designs, then you might wanna double check on the licensing for the graphics that are from the elements section of Canva. I don't know if that depends on your subscription or exactly how that works. So if you're selling items, make sure that you're careful to check into that. Um, but if you're just doing this for a friend or doing this for you, you're not making any money off of this transaction, then I'm sure you can use these elements no problem. But I'm gonna go into text and try to figure out what I wanna put here in the middle. So there are some recently used kind of um, pre-created combinations that you can use here straight from Canva. But I typically just like to add a heading and then I can change my text from there. And as you can see, it says DIY Alex brand kit. These are my brand fonts. So that's what it's going to default to, but I can still change it from here. So I'll start by clicking add a heading and I'm just gonna use this cute phrase. I don't know if I came up with this phrase or if I heard it somewhere and I copied it, I don't know. But I like to use the phrase classy, crafty, and a bit sassy. I made it on a shirt a couple of years ago um, and I think it would be so cute here in this design, especially with like the pink and the leopard together. I think it's gonna be adorable. So for the first text box, I'm gonna type in classy. Currently though, my text is black, so you can't hardly see it. So I will highlight all of this 
Oops, can't get the whole thing highlighted. <laughs> Goodness, all right, let's make it bigger so it's a little easier to work with. There we go. And right here under the A, I will change the text color to white. And then I'm gonna find a font that I like to work with. So I'll stick it up here at the top. We'll resize as we go. So right up here, we can start checking into fonts. So the cool thing about Canva is that there are a ton of really modern fonts in here already, and I absolutely love that. I'm so glad that that is an option already. You can also search by types of fonts here in the search bar, and it will bring you up different kinds of fonts. But I want to show you a trick that I think I picked up on TikTok recently. I'd never noticed this before. You can actually upload your own fonts into Canva right here. So you can literally just go into your computer, grab a font, and upload it. In fact, I'll show you how to do that even though I'm not gonna use a font like that today. So you click that button and then you click right here, upload a font. And then this is where you would wanna have all your fonts downloaded in one place. So if you don't already have that, and I am totally guilty of this, I'm sorry, just like the rest of you, I do not have all of my fonts in one place, but I do have a handful where they're supposed to be. So in my craft files, I have a fonts folder. I don't have every single font I've downloaded, but I do have quite a bit. So let's see. When we go in here, let's just pick a random one so I can show you how to do this. So we'll go into the 100 fonts bundle, volume two. The only thing that stinks is that you can't see what the fonts look like. So you're literally, you have to just know what um, name you're going for. So let's uh, import just PG. Click open. And then it wants to confirm that I have the licensing um, to go ahead and upload this font. And I do because I purchased it from um, either Design Bundles or Creative Fabrica. So I'm good to go, but that is something good to keep in mind. When you're talking about default free fonts, I'm not sure how that works. So you may wanna look into that. But I'll go ahead and click the purple upload anyway button because I'm certain that I have the rights to this font or the licensing to it in order to upload it. And then you can see it right here under just PG regular. And then it's going to be in our fonts list now when I look through here. So super cool that you can upload your favorite fonts that you're used to using with crafting. But I just want to pick something cute. Um, let's see. I was using this one before this brusher font, which I think ended up kind of fun. But maybe let's look for something else. Let's see what else we can find. Let's try script. Okay, and so it's suggesting cursive. So it's pulling up all the cursive fonts for me at once, which if you guys know how golden this is, this is gonna save you so much time if you're looking for a certain type of font rather than having to scroll through the entire list and see everything. Ooh, apricots is one that I love to use. I think it's so cute. In fact, let's start, ooh, or Better Together Script. Oh, so many good options. Okay, let's start with Better Together Script, and then if we have to change it, we will. So I'm gonna start with Classy, and then I'm going to add another heading, and because I wanna use a different font, and each time that I do a different line, I like to do a different text box, because that way I can edit them individually a little bit more easy. So my next word in my quote is crafty. And so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the text box size there and I can bring it in so it's not quite so wide. And then I just wanna make it comparable to the classy. Classy, crafty, and then I need another line that says and a bit, and then another line that says sassy. So let's try it in this script font. Um, so I'll just click this to select it. And then on my keyboard, I'll use control C and then control V to paste this because I want the and a bit sassy to be in the same font if we can read it. So I'll type that in and a bit, and then I'll do sassy on its own line. So I'll make that smaller. Put that here, and then we will again can, uh, click that to select it. Use Control C and then Control V to paste it. And now I'll type in sassy, <laughs> which is accurate for me. 
There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use this bar here in the bottom to zoom in a little bit so I can see a little bit closer. Ooh, another reason why I love using fonts like this, not only because they're script fonts and they're super cute. Do you see how this is distressed? When you are working with heat transfer vinyl and distress fonts, it is a super pain to work with stuff like that. So with sublimation, I love being able to do the things that were a little bit more difficult to do with my Cricut. So I take advantage of that as much as I can. So now I'm just going to play with the sizing around here a little bit. See if I can get things in a similar size. So let's see how tall this text box is. Does it tell us that? I guess it just gives us font size. So we know the font size is 175 here on Classy and it's 134 on Crafty. So let's try like 150 and see if that looks good. That's not bad. I like to fit everything in nice and cozy here. I still want it to be readable and I'm gonna show you a way to make it a little bit more readable here soon. I just used my arrow keys to move it down just a touch. And then we'll resize and a bit a little bit so that it's not quite so small. And then we'll do sassy, which is 163. So I would like classy and sassy to be the same size. So with sassy selected, I will, actually, I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to make it 175. There we go. That way everything looks nice and balanced, nice and symmetrical for the most part, if that's what you're going for. Of course, design rules are always made to be broken. So if you try it and you hate it, then definitely do your own thing. But I like to start with symmetrical designs and then kind of break out of it from there, if that makes any sense. So I'm liking where this is going a lot, but one thing that I notice is that it is a bit hard to read this text on top of this busy background. So one of my favorite features in Canva is some of these text effects that you can use to make your text easier to read. So I'm gonna click on Classy, and then I'm going to go up to Effects, and you have all these different style things that you can do to change it up. You can curve your text and do all kinds of cool things. One thing you can do is do a background. I don't know how much you can adjust on the background, but I am really not a big fan of that because it's just really chunky. Um, so I guess you can make it rounded or square corners. So that's a newer feature in Canva. Ooh, and you can even do, like you can decrease the spread and stuff. So that's cool. So see, Canva is always adding new features and I always think that's really fun. So this is definitely not sponsored by Canva or anything. <laughs> I just like working with it because I think it's fun and easy. Um, but in this case, what I'm gonna use for this text is lift right here. So it's gonna give a really subtle shadow behind the text, but you'll see a big difference when we actually um, press it onto the shirt. It's gonna look a lot better. But I'm gonna take the intensity up from 50 to 100 because I do wanna actually have a visible shadow behind it so that I can definitely read it. And then I'm gonna repeat that on all my other lines because I want them all to have the same effect. I wonder if we can do this all at once. So in order to select multiple, I just clicked it and held down the shift key and clicked these other lines as well to select them all. Then we'll go into effects and choose lift for all of them. And then we'll increase that in intensity again to 100. That way you can kind of see behind the text, it's a little bit darker than it is outside here. But I really like the way that that looks and how it makes it pop so that we can definitely read the text um, because one of my pet peeves is creating designs that are hard to read. <laughs> I really think that that is setting yourself up for silliness because if the whole point is for people to read your shirt, you want them to go to read it, right? So I really like the direction this is going. Let me zoom out just a little bit and show you what I see though. So what I can see right now is that I have a, like a relatively square design, right? I guess maybe it's rectangular, um, but the center of the design is where all the action's at. That's where everything is, that's where all the action is. So what I would like to do is fill out the sides of my design a bit better, just so that there's interest inside the whole frame. Otherwise, I could try doing things like resizing the frame. I could resize the whole box to fit this text, really. Um, but I just wanna give you guys some options for working with design. So you could, of course, import another SVG file or PNG file that you have of some clip art that you like, but I'm going to utilize the elements here in Canva and see if I can find anything that um, works really well for this design. So one tip that I have when you're looking for things 
is to think about the overall shape of them, okay? So when you're looking at this, like I said, this center design basically makes its own rectangle, right? And I have these really long skinny rectangles left over with nothing but the background in them. So what I need to do is I need to try and look for designs that are rectangular and long to fill up some of this space and so that it actually looks the way that I want it to. And if that doesn't make any sense, that's okay. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. So when I think of anything crafty, I always, I almost always think of like scissors and paint palettes as far as like little symbols that always signify crafty to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the search bar here and type in scissors and see what options there are. So as you can see, there's an option of a free image. That image is free, that image is free. So are all of these. And the free is usually towards the top. So it looks like if you type in scissors, these first two rows and this one is free. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for designs. That way you don't accidentally insert a pro option into your um, canvas if you don't have pro. So I like this pair of scissors. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by inserting this. And then it is selected, but it's behind a bunch of other layers. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys. I'm just gonna hold on to the left arrow key to move it out of the way so I can individually manipulate this one graphic. So I'm gonna take it and rotate it so that it's actually the opposite direction. And see what I mean how we're trying to fit this into a long rectangle and it's not resized just yet, but this is a rectangular shaped piece of clip art. So it's kind of along the right lines of what we're looking for. But sometimes it takes some finesse to figure this out and that's perfectly fine. Um, that's exactly why we get to play around with designs, right? And this is the fun part of the creative process is figuring out what's going to look good in these designs and all that stuff. So I have the shape right here and it's actually fitting in fairly well, but I don't really like the color because I can't see it on top of the leopard print. So I'm going to go up to this color box right here and choose a new color. Now, as you can see, I have all my brand colors loaded in here so that I have quick and easy access to them. Um, so maybe I'll try out a lavender, see if that works. That's cute, but you can't really see it. So I'm just going to start clicking on some different colors and seeing what comes up. Ooh, I kind of like how that looks. It's still not super duper clear, not quite as good contrast as the black and white just yet, but let's see where we get with that. There's kind of two schools of thought here as far as the type of designs that you're going for. One is a very kind of geometric and symmetrical design. And even though this design isn't perfect, um, an example of symmetry would be me copying this using control C on my keyboard to copy and control V to paste, and then putting the same pair of scissors over here on the other side. So that would be a super symmetrical design, right? Because if you basically split this in half, other than the text, everything would be exactly the same. If I wanted to do like a diagonal symmetrical design to make it look balanced, but not quite as perfect, I could move the scissors up here and another pair down here, and we could kind of be going for this kind of thing. So if I folded the design right here in half, then there would be something at the top and something at the bottom. So that's something to consider as a basic principle of design. And if you guys are wanting to design images for yourself and stuff like that, I recommend you look up some videos on things like that. I took some art classes where I learned about basic principles of design, um, but knowing what those are is really, really helpful when it comes to creating things like this, because it's gonna help you create visually appealing things a lot more easily than if you um, are just trying to wing it and just trying to go by what looks good. Those actual principles of design make it a lot easier to to give you guidelines and thoughts about where things should go, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we have the scissors, that looks okay, um, but let's see what else we can come up with. Another thing that I like to do is a paint palette. I always think that looks cute when it comes to crafty clip art and things like that. So like here's a cute paint palette, let's click it and put it in our canvas. And again, I can't reach it because there's a bunch of other layers in the way. So since it's still selected, I'm gonna use the arrows on my keyboard to move it all the way out to the side. And I'll make it the same color as my scissors here. And that's okay, but it's not really the size that we're going for. So remember we talked about this side being rectangular and that's more square. Um, so it just doesn't really, doesn't really look the way that I want it to. So I'm gonna delete that. And then, um, oh, there's some cute paint swatches. If you want to look for some paint swatches in Canva, 
And it looks like they're even free. How cool. Let's see. Ooh, what if we search paintbrush like this one? I don't like this style of paintbrush, but maybe a paintbrush would be a better fit for a um, rectangular shaped item that could go over here. So let's try paintbrush and see what comes up. Ooh, I kind of like this image right here. Kind of reminds me of like a wall paint paintbrush, but still, we can end up with something really cute if we uh, go with a design like that. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this paintbrush and again, move it over to the right so I can click on it. And then with it still selected, I'm going to change the color over to like this. I think it's called Tiffany. Um, it's kind of almost like a teal color. But I kind of don't like the way that it's arching out this way. So with it still selected, I'm going to go up to the top and under flip. I'm going to choose flip horizontal so that it kind of paints the other way. Um, and actually, you know what? I might even tilt it a little bit using this control down here. So it's still tilted some, but it's more rectangular. You guys see how the bounding box around the outside is nice and rectangular. That's closer to what we are going for um, with this design to give it some good balance without making it quite so pretty and perfect. You know what I mean? Ew, guys, I'm kind of digging this. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate these scissors as well so that they're pointing inward. Um, one really good benefit of putting everything facing inward is it brings an emphasis back to the center of the design. Because obviously this is where we want the eye to spend the longest, but these other clip art pieces can be used to kind of signify like, hey, this is the most important part of the design. I'm gonna bump this out just a little bit because it's a little bit close to that C. And you guys, I am really liking how this is turning out. This is the right aesthetic I'm going for. I think it looks relatively balanced. It's not pretty and perfect, but if we folded it in half, then a lot of the space would be taken up. Does that make sense to you guys? So if I put it like a dotted line down the center of my design and I literally folded this piece of paper in half after it was printed, what I'm saying is you would see the scissors at the top and the paintbrush on the bottom with all the text taking up the middle. Now, I think it would be too crowded to go ahead and like duplicate this and have something in every corner. I think that would be a little bit much. Um, I, my personal aesthetic is I like to go almost too much. <laughs> so I think this one looks good. It's full. It looks um, busy, but it's not too busy. So busy that it hurts your eyes. Now, I want to experiment with something real quick, though, um, because I'm still a little concerned about the contrast here on top of the leopard print. So I'm going to click on this graphic and I'm going to see if I have the option to add in the um, effects like we did on the text. So let's see if I can find anything that can help me do that. So there's lots of like filters and stuff like that, but I don't really care for that in this moment. Maybe we only have those options with... Um, with text. So I guess we don't. Ooh, this could be kind of cool. So let's click on this button right here, the transparency, and I can actually drop the transparency just a little bit so that it still looks good and it's still part of the design. I have it at 91%, but you can kind of see the leopard print through the design. So that doesn't make it stand out better. That actually makes it stand out a little bit less, but I think that's really complimentary to what we're trying to do here. So I'm just going to type in 91 on the scissors as well so that they look really similar. Oh, you guys. Okay. I'm really digging this. <laughs> and I think this is our final contender here. Actually, hold on. One more thing. <laughs> I'm wondering if the word spacing in and a bit is a little bit wide. So in order to adjust your spacing, you're going to want to go up to these lines right here. And you can adjust your letter spacing here and your line spacing. So let's... Oh, I don't know if I can change the word spacing though. <laughs> Let's try bringing it in. See, and that just ends up kind of stacking the letters on top of each other, so we don't want that. Okay, well, it's gonna be a little bit of a pain to do too much adjusting here, so I think I am gonna leave it. Um, but that just goes to show you, I mean, we could literally go all day long. Whoops, I don't want a bullet point. Um, so I can use the undo button here, or I can use Control-Z on my keyboard to get rid of that. 
You can change up like the alignment. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with all of these features. And I recommend if you're gonna do this that you do spend some time um, learning about it and um, practicing with all the different things you can do. Because like I said, if you're gonna be selling these designs, especially if you wanna market yourself as a professional, then you should know the platform fairly well before you are using it as a tool to create your designs, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this looks. So let's talk about settings for downloading as well as settings for printing. So once I'm finished, I'm gonna click out of it so nothing is selected. And then I'm gonna go up to this big um, button right here. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna rename my design right here so that if I wanna go back in and search for it, then I have some keywords to go by. So I'm gonna call it Classy Crafty Sassy Sublimation. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to this big gray download button, and then we're gonna take a look at some of these settings. If you're gonna be printing this on a sublimation printer like I am, then I have found that my favorite setting is the PDF print um, because it's a high quality um, print that is intended to go on your printer. A, a PNG would probably be my second choice. Um, because notice that both of these say high quality. If you're looking at the JPEG or the JPG, it says small file size image, PDF small file size. We definitely don't want anything small because we want it to print really sharp and really pretty. So I'm gonna use PDF print here and I'm not gonna use any crop marks and bleed since we're not gonna be cutting anything or anything like that. I don't need anything necessary. Um, if you're gonna be cutting it on a paper trimmer, then you may wanna consider using these marks and then I'll choose download. And once you have your design downloaded, you can double check that you like the way that everything looks. And I hope this video was able to give you some more insight into a design process or what a design process could look like to create your perfect sublimation design. From here, of course, you want to print your sublimation design using your desired print settings. Then you can press it on your shirt or your sublimation substrate and you are good to go. If you have more questions or you want to learn more about sublimation, then I recommend you continue watching my sublimation for beginner series. So I'll be sure to put the next episode of the series on the next screen for you so it's super easy to find. And I'll also put the whole playlist with all the episodes in it down in the description of this video so you can watch the whole thing start to finish if you prefer. But if you have more questions or you want to see other topics covered in my series, I'd love to hear your sublimation topic suggestions down in the comments of this video. And if you're not already a member of one of my crafty fams on Facebook, I would love to have you be a part of them. So I'll be sure to link both of my groups down in the description below. And since you've made it this far in the video, then I'd really love to get to know you on social media. So please be sure to search for me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. I'll also put direct links to all of my profiles down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.